Hello and welcome, it's Bushwhacker here with another Stationeers tutorial. On today's video we're going to do basic base pressurization. Now I usually don't do this, but before we get started I'm just going to talk to you guys just a little bit here. Now YouTube has changed some of the stuff that deals with smaller creators and I don't want to get into it too much. If you're curious you can go online and I'm sure there's tons of videos of people talking about it. but. I don't really want to complain. I just want to ask you guys if you're really enjoying these videos, please go ahead and subscribe. Um, it really means a lot to me and with these new rules, um, people subscribing to my videos are going to mean a lot for me. So especially if you like these videos and you want to see more in the future, definitely go ahead and subscribe. So rant over. Um, we can go ahead and get started with our build now. So when you're wanting to pressurize a base, I suggest making it as small a space as possible. Um, that just makes it easier for you to be able to maintain your pressure. Having a huge area it's going to take a lot of resources and it's going to be quite a bit of a pain trying to keep that pressure where you want it. And also you'll have to deal with the temperature changes and all that stuff as well. Now I've taken my base and made it completely out of steel. This is because steel seems to do a bit better of a job of keeping pressure than iron does, even though I believe they're both supposed to maintain pressure equally. But I've found steel works out a little bit better. Now also, what I've done is I've pretty much double walled my entire base. So I have these frames, and then beneath the frames there is the uh, wall. And then these windows are, there's a window on the inside and a window on the outside. Now, I don't really know how much this is going to help you out, but it appears to keep this base pretty airtight. So, like I said, the first thing that you have to do is you have to build a base like this that's able to keep that pressure. So, I did a little bit of experimenting, and I found that one oxite will fill one... I don't know, cubic area. So I'm just calling like the area of these windows. So this would be like one cubic area. One oxide would fill that to 7.2 kilopascals. Um, so obviously this base is um, 12 cubic units. I don't know exactly what they are. It looks like it's probably 10 feet or so. And uh, I've calculated it out where I'm going to need about 167 oxide in order to fill this entire base. So that's how we're going to do this really basic pressurization is I'm just going to take oxide and I'm going to make sure everything is closed and I have an active vent here to drain the base. I'm going to make sure that's turned off and we're going to go ahead and just dump this straight on the ground. So you can see we're putting this on the ground but because there is no temperature in here, they are not melting. So obviously that's a bit of an issue. Now sometimes I found that if it's in the light, it might melt, but a really good way to get this started is to take your waste tank. You can draw open, take this right out of your inventory there. And now this is just gonna have nitrogen, or sorry, this should just have carbon dioxide in it, which is totally fine to be in the atmosphere as well. And we can go ahead and we can open this up and then put it back in our inventory right away. And then that oxide starts melting. So we'll let that melt away. I'll come kind of in the corner here. Okay, and now all of that oxide is done melting. And you can see uh, that. I probably calculated a little bit low because obviously some of my air tank pressure went into the atmosphere as well. But you can see that we've pressurized our base exactly to 100 kilopascals. And if you're running an airlock, that's really important because it needs to reach 100 kilopascals before the doors will open. I mean, worst case scenario, you can use the manual override to open them, but this is definitely the best case scenario. I would even shoot for a little bit above 100 kilopascals. Now when the sun starts coming up here, it's going to start um, shining in our base, which is going to increase the temperature. As you can see, it's already increased to 0.2 Celsius. So with that temperature increase, you're going to get a pressure increase as well. 
Now, obviously using the oxide isn't the best case scenario because you're gonna be getting about 90% oxygen and 10% nitrogen. Um, but this definitely does allow you to breathe when you take your mask off, so it'll work for now. Now, I've definitely been listening to you guys' feedback, and people have been suggesting that I post these on the Steam Workshop, so I did do that. If you're interested in downloading this map, you can search my YouTube name, which is Bushwacka, and you should be able to just click that subscribe button, and that should download the space for you. Uh, this is my first one, so guys, definitely let me know if it's working. Obviously, it's a pretty basic map, but just in case you guys wanted to experiment around with it a little bit. But that's it. That is just the really basic way to pressurize your base. I'm going to have a more advanced video here very soon. I just wanted to show you guys so you guys can start going ahead and start pressurizing your base. Now, if you've been watching my other videos and you're really liking them, I would definitely say please go ahead and subscribe. Like I said at the beginning, it helps me out a lot. And I am very appreciative of all you guys' support for sure. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those below. I always try to answer them. Hopefully I will see you again next time. Bushwaka out.